All of these niche fragrances that I purchased were all blind buys, but they are all winners. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of myself, Gabby, the Fragrantician. So if you are new to my channel, please give a big thumbs up if you want my channel to grow, because my channel is growing now. I have reached 600 subscribers. It might be over that now, I don't know. But I do appreciate those that have subscribed because my fragrance journey is all evolving and it's all learning and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm turning my passion into something that is growing and the fragrance community is the most amazing community here on YouTube that I've met. Um, there is n no toxicity at all. It is, and if there is, it's soon stamped out, believe you me. So, um, love you all, just love you all. So today we are talking about some niche fragrances that I've purchased in the last few months and I've done reviews on them or I've done two reviews on a couple of these. Coming in, the first one that I'm going to talk about. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about coming in at number eight is Oud Purple Rose. This is a real vampy gothic dark rose with saffron which can come off as a little bit leathery and I love that. So if you don't like that, then this isn't for you. Strong, completely strong, projects like a beast. It's a, it's a fragrance. I'm getting used to this. It's a fragrance that I will wear in um, winter only. Um, autumn and winter only. L good Halloween fragrance. If you want to be a vampire, this is for a real dark, dark vampire in you. I, I think it's absolutely amazing. Really, really is. And I'll put the video down below of the review I did of this um, around about October or November time last year. Absolutely stunning. Um, I blind bought it, but I knew I would like it. I'm glad I did. So that is Oud Purple Rose. Coming in at number seven, is Bond number no. 9, B9, and this was Cassandra Jones that made me buy this. Well, she didn't make me buy this, but she sold it to me. I just had to have it. And my husband bought it for me for Christmas at such a steal. This again, it's strong. This again is strong. It has edge to it. It's sexiness. It's slightly leathery projects really does project i'm not going to go through the notes but um this is such a a heavy hitter it is a beast of a fragrance it oh it is so so lovely but i have worn this to work in the past and i have to say with bond number bond number nine fragrances i'm not really bought by into it there's only one other that i do want to get and that is chinatown but I haven't seen really any good deals on it. So if you do see some good deals on it, please let me know. And I am in the UK, so I don't know if it can be shipped, but I am I am itching for that fragrance, really itching for that. There's none others in the um, Bond Number no. 9 portfolio that really catch my eye. But Bond Number no. 9, B9, definitely. It's definitely unisex as well. Definitely, it's not, it leans more masculine than feminine. So it, but it's stunning, absolutely stunning. Coming in at number six is a small one that I sampled of this. And then I got a little small bottle of it because I don't want to get the big bottle of it just yet. But it's a 10 mil of Frédéric Mal Musque Ravageur. Muscravageur. Now this, get out the box, comes in a little box. So this is a 10ml bottle here. Now this, 
I'm not gonna spray this because it's so strong and it's so, it is quite nuclear fragrance. There are no floral notes in this fragrance, which may surprise some of you because you may think, ah, oh, no floral notes, Gabby, what, what's happened? But the way it's blended, I sampled it from a little small sample from little 1.2 mils. And I just, I just had to have it. So this will last me a fair while because with that sample, I only sprayed about three or four sprays of it. That's all I needed from that because it does have some citrus in there, but it's musk. I think it has, it is a, it's classed as an oriental. So it has cinnamon and clove. It has that spicy feeling to it combined with the musk, slightly animalic as well yes but it's not as animalic as some others that i have a lovely quality to it it is this is a fragrance to dress up in although i did wear it to work again <laughs> because i do this one is a dress up fragrance it is dressed to the nines and post covid this baby is coming out to play musk ravageur the next fragrance I'm going to talk about now. I did blind buy two of these. Yes, I did blind buy two of these. However, one of them wasn't really suited to me, so I've just gifted it to somebody. And if she's watching, I hope you like it. It's lovely, but it was just not my style, which did surprise me. And that was by the house of Aaron Terence Hughes and it was Dirty Slut. So that one has gone to a better home, hopefully. Whereas Jasmine Narcotique, well, this comes in a 10 mil, which is quite good. And it comes in a 50 mil as well. And I will be getting the 50 mil. Oh yes. Oh, it's heady jasmine. It's euphoric. It is jasmine sandback. It is night blooming jasmine. You have to like a floral. This is a naughty floral. And I know with Aaron Terence Hughes, he wanted to depict that jazz nights of the 1920s and 1930s where women were naughty or people were naughty, not just women in those clubs recreating that atmosphere this does that it has suede effect to it so it has a suede note in there and it has a cocaine accord yes cocaine accord now i'm not sure if it has that signature filth accord in it but it is it's a dirty scent it's sweet and heady and as i say you do have to like jasmine you really really do now i know Another YouTuber, um, my friend Chantel Tiffany, she purchased, I think, this size and she wasn't sure about it. So, um, but no, I, because it is floral, it's intense floral, but the jasmine is so, it is quite animalic. It did say on his website, it could easily be a signature scent. Now, Without a shadow of a doubt, it could be my signature scent and it will be one of my signatures in my portfolio. It has remnants of a little bit of Serge Luton's Fils de Joie, but where that has honey in, this doesn't, so that makes it more sweeter. This isn't as, this is sweet, but it's not as sweet. It's, it feels like it has agar wood in it, but I don't think it does, but, oh, jasmine and the suede which which probably gives it that slightly slightly leathery effect it smells a bit like something in the biblical sense a little bit it does but wow amazing jasmine narcotique by aaron terence hughes coming in at number three we have by the house of papillon and this stole my heart angelique Yes, Angelique. It's a bouquet of florals of white champaca, buttery feeling of oris, a little bit of frankincense. It's a very much cedar wood as well. 
it's very much a comforting scent for me and I did a full review on this which I will link down below um, and it has an air of yesteryear about it an air of vintageness about it but Liz Moores has managed to capture it in modern day perfumery wow stunning and this was gifted to me from her so I thank you very much Liz it's it's treasured it's close to my heart it's it's a very emotional scent for me it doesn't it has a little bit of earthiness to it but it's not too earthy it's a quality about it that is just breathtaking it really really is it's 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 a stunning stunning fragrance and that is angelique by Papillon. Coming in next, we have Carnal Flower, which is a little one by Frederic Mao. Now I sampled this again and I had to have the little 10 mil and I have been using this a fair while and I have done a full review on this, which I will be uploading. So watch out for that, but I had to include this just had to it is i would probably say for me so far the best tuberose i have ever smelt a little bit of melanin but not too much only just a touch because i don't like melon a bit of coconut in there a bit of jasmine musk it's but it's tuberose dominant and you do have to love tuberose it's that greenness it's quite a green scent oh it just Let's just, let's just do an eye roll. Now, carnal, is it carnal? I would not say it's a sexy scent, but it is an austere, strong, powerful scent. So this scent, you can command a room with this. It is, it's, it's exuberant, this scent. It's a quality all of its own. It's a bit of a, a star scent, quite, quite, beautiful it really is really really beautiful so watch out for my review and I will say that is going to be a full bottle worthy I will get a 50 ml bottle of that um, of carnal flower and of um, jasmine narcotique those are going to be full bottle muscavageur I'm not sure I I really do I, I like it a lot but that 10 mil is probably going to suffice for me because that scent, the Muscavageur, is not a scent that you would wear every day. It it's not, doesn't have that flexibility like the others do. Coming in next, we have L'Ombre dans l'eau, which I have recorded a review, a review of this and you will see. So this, actually I think there's eight scents in here. It's, I think I'll, I'll I'll put the link down in the description box, but this is it's a green rose, slightly dark, has black currant, that black currant leaf, that cassis, that shrubbery, um, has a geranium feel quality to it as well, which is lovely, um, and I do love that kind of rose geranium feel because it's not too rosy it's not grandma rosy at all it's very aromatic this i sampled loved it had to get the full bottle absolutely lovely this really is and this is a limited edition bottle and i got this from fenix in newcastle which was sent down here and stunning absolutely beautiful it has lovely projection moderate longevity but beautiful projection and sillage it can fill a room it really is and i love it and it was lauren bacall's signature scent and she was a kick-ass woman back in the 1940s and 50s right up through to when she died in 2014 just short of her 90th birthday but by no means is it a granny scent no it's austere and elegant 
L'Ombre non l'eau, The Shade in the Water. Finally, we come to my honorary scent. Now, I know I've talked about this a lot and I have done a full video of this, but I love it. I love it. It is my number one niche indie scent, Papillon Salome. It is. I, I've put a bit of a dent in this, believe it or not. I have. You may think, oh no, I haven't, but I have. It is Stella for me. It is just pure animalic jasmine and a little bit of Turkish rose. But it has those animalic notes in there that give it a magical quality. I absolutely adore this. This is a signature for me. It's just absolutely I, I love it and it's not for everybody and that's the beauty of scents and perfumery. It's not for everybody. If you don't like animalic fragrances, stay away from this because the, the jasmine in this is beautiful but it's it has those animal notes there and it plays together with the jasmine and the rose and it intermingles and it's just stellar. It really is with the musk as well. It's. Is it the hieracium that is that animalic note that's in there that is just beautiful? And it's done, blended to me perfectly because I'm not, I thought I was never a fan of animalic scents with the contain, you know, heavy musk and civet and all of those and castoreum and those kind of notes. But this, it projects. Oh boy, does it project it, it, the longevity, it lingers, good eight hours on my skin or more. Um, oh, it's just absolutely beautiful. It, the Siage scent trail is lovely when you walk. And if you, if you spray a little bit in your hair, because I do, because I know people say, I don't spray it in your hair, but I do. Spray a little bit in your hair, you walk around and you get a it billows and it wafts and it's beautiful and it is erotic it's sensual it could easily be a signature for me and i adore it i had to purchase a full bottle after sampling it so that's salome by papillon what are your niche fragrances that you like your niche or indie fragrances that you like comment down below i really want to see what they are if you've got a favourite one, a favourite indie or niche scent that you like at the moment, have you done a haul? You know, have you have you done a similar to what I've done? Have you have you done something that captured your eye and you just had to have? Comment down below. But until the next time, you've been watching another edition of the Fragrantition, and as I always say, be young, be foolish, be happy, and don't worry about the future. Live in the present. Ciao for now.